During the SEA Games in Manila, you were the uh, talk of the town during that time because uh, <laughs> you, uh, you proposed to your girlfriend then, now your fiancé, Michelle. How did, you, yes. how, did you, how did you plan this? So I'd been planning it for months. Um, I'd already decided earlier that year that I was going to propose just the – I had to figure out how I was going to do it. I knew I was going to do it in Manila during SEA Games, but I didn't know exactly if I was going to do it after SEA Games, if I was going to do it before. Uh, but it's crazy is that I've actually had multiple dreams of me doing it on the court. No joke. Really? I woke up in the middle of the night and that I had a dream of me doing it at a tournament, but it was on the court somewhere. And uh, her brother had mentioned that as an idea. We were in a secret chat group where we were talking about ideas, and he mentioned that, and I was like, that's how I'm going to do it. He literally said it. I'm like, I've had multiple dreams of that. That's how I'm doing it. So um, all it was really had to do with uh, was fix the logistics of how exactly I was going to do it. But uh, obviously, I wish I, we would have won the match and then do it. It would have been great. But honestly, it was perfect the way that it was. Yeah. I remember um, you asked me to, to stay because I was about to leave after the match and you asked me to stay longer because you were going to do it. And I said, so I stayed and uh, I watched the whole thing. And um, I'm a bit embarrassed to say I actually shed a tear. <laughs> well, you you're not the it. only one. Jason Patrick Bone told me he was crying too. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was it was an awesome night, you know. Um, really, the only person that I told that I was going to do it of the team was Tret. He was my roommate, and I had told him, him and his wife a few days before that. And then when we were walking out for the ceremony, I whispered it to, to Nino, and he was like, no way. And so they obviously were really excited. Also, I didn't want to tell too many people because, you know, you don't want that uh, the secret to – to get uh, figure it out but uh, I mean it, it worked out perfectly her family and her friends were there and my family was there so um, it was great so did you have a plan B in case you said no <laughs> <laughs> run <laughs> <laughs> um, not at all I mean we, we've talked about it a lot and uh, she was the one waiting for it so I think uh I was actually trying to throw her off a little bit. You know, she'd been at, we've been talking about it. I would try to, I wanted to throw her off so I could, it could be more of a surprise. But uh, it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. Hey, maybe we all know, we we all don't know, and maybe if you won the gold there, beat uh, Nino and Jason, maybe she should, maybe she would say no. I know. You never huh? know now, you, right? You never know, right? Huh? <laughs> Exactly. Oh, exactly. Stay positive and uh, exactly. The, it yes. worked out the way it should have. It, it, it was yeah. supposed to, so it was good. It was good. Ruben, what's um, what's your favorite surface when playing? Favorite surface. Um, honestly, I'll give you a couple options. In Davis Cup, I loved playing on shell, especially in Cebu really slow shell and Davis Cup I thought was really fun to play on. Um, Just to correct you, uh, the court in Cebu is not a shell court. It's a oh. natural play court. There's no shell there. No it's all way. Sand. Yeah, wow. it's all sand. They don't put shell on the courts in Cebu. Wow, so I didn't it, know that. It, it's a kind of a natural clay that sand is already mixed. They just get it somewhere in Cebu and they just compact it, and that's it. That's that's the court in Cebu. There's no shell there. That's crazy. Well, and I learned something today. Well, I love playing on that surface. Um, had one of my – some of my best memories there. But uh, typically for singles, my favorite surface is like a – kind of a faster hard court, but in altitude. I play really well in altitude. I've had a lot of good singles results in altitude, qualified for a few challengers. Um, and singles and altitude, so I like playing in that. Uh, but for doubles, typically something like a medium to fast hardcore for sure. Why is that? Why 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 do you like playing on those conditions? Well, I like the altitude because I think my serves like my best shot, and um, I feel like it just accentuates it even more. Like I qualified and I won a round in the 
$125,000 challenger a few years ago. And I was averaging like 15 aces per match. I played, I played five matches and I hit 15 aces at least every single match. And I'm not doing that typically in normal, uh, in normal situations or normal conditions, but in altitude I was. So um, I think that's why I really like it. Uh, we were talking about uh, Davis Cup earlier. Can you take us back to your favorite Davis Cup match? I have a hint favorite. what is it, but I, I, I want to hear it from you. <laughs> I have a couple. Um, in 2013, we beat Thailand in Cebu, and I beat Denai Udomchok, um, who was top 100 of the world singles at one point. Uh, I beat him in straight sets to clinch the tie in 2013. I probably that was probably the best uh, singles match that I ever played in my whole life. Um, I beat him in straight sets, and to do it in at uh, in Cebu with that crowd and with my family there and everyone, but of course, and to clinch the match, I think was an amazing experience. And then the second one is New Zealand. Later that year, we played them in the finals of Group Two. And I beat Ruben Statham, a friend of mine, eight, six in the fifth, five and a half hours long. Um, I know. I remember that. Yes, I beat him. And, and I think that was an amazing match, too. I think especially because uh, on the first day, I lost in five sets to Mike Venus. And I had a match point. And I remember I was devastated after losing that match, especially, you know, I... I always the take team matches pretty hard. I felt like the team was relying on me there, and I, I kind of let them down. So I was – I, I, I'll admit I shed a tear that night too. But mm -hmm. um, to win in that fashion on the last day, I felt I redeemed myself. And uh, honestly, it was not only one of the best tennis memories i ever had, I was probably the most tired I've ever been in my life because mm -hmm. I played five or five and a half hours on the first day and then five, five and a half hours on the – on the last day, that's 10, 11 hours of tennis in that heat in one weekend was a lot. So um, I remember it all for sure. I, I remember that too. I, I watch every single point of that match. And while you are talking about it, I'm still having goosebumps because uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. The Me too. Whole match, Me too. How, how dramatic that, uh, that match was. Uh, for sure. <clears throat> you'll never, I, you, those are the, the memories in tennis that you'll never forget. You know, Physical. you remember your teammates, you remember the captain, you remember the coaches, you remember you supporting us so much and all the, the crowd. You never forget that. Like, I can close my eyes and still like picture those things. And um, even though I, I wish we had won that match as a team, I mean, I'll always have that memory. And those are something that I'll hopefully tell my kids about someday, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, Ruben, who, who was your um, most uh, who was the most influential for you as a tennis player? Most influential, I would have to say my mom. Um, she played as well. She would have been like a class A player, adult player, but she was the one that that to drove me to practices. Um, there isn't a huge tennis program where I live, so in order for me to practice, I have to drive to Indianapolis, which is about an hour and a half from here. So my mom three times a week was driving me there an hour and a half and driving me back three times a week, three hours, three or four times a week, just so that I could practice. Um, that's obviously a huge sacrifice. And then when I was 14, I, 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 um, I went to high school in Indianapolis to train and she was driving back and forth every day every single day for a whole year, three hours, just so that I could be training there and she could go to work and come back. So, I mean, she sacrificed so much of her time and her energy for me uh, to develop into the person and the player that I am. So, I mean, I would have to say her for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, I know your dad is a doctor and, and uh, he must be one of the frontliners now. Um, Tell us something about your dad. My dad's a kind of a quiet guy, but I mean, he played tennis too as well. And obviously he's been a huge, um, huge factor, you know, um, he's always supported me. 
even though maybe he hasn't been as vocal as my mom has, he, he's always believed in me and, and, uh, and, uh, really pushed me to be where I am today, you know, and obviously I'm praying that he stays safe since he's still working in the hospital, mm -hmm. um, and trying to help everyone fight this virus and, and all the things that are happening. So, uh, I give him all credit, you know, one more person that I is very influential in my tennis. Um, when I was 14, I started working with a coach who still helps me to this day. His name's Kelly Jones. Uh, he's number one in the world in doubles in 1992. He's kind of like my father, my tennis father, to be honest with you. Um, he's had a huge influence uh, on me um, from the time when I was a kid until now. You know, he's been a great mentor and friend throughout the years. Um, especially you know coaching me when I was younger uh, to have someone like with that type of experience he made the finals of all the grand slams just to give you a little bit of his resume and to have someone like that believe in you was a had a huge influence on me you know that's uh, that's amazing um people like that uh who who taught you a lot gave you a lot of uh inspiration to to be who you are now and we we thank those people for sure also i want to add him to the list of dream doubles partners oh really number five for sure or top five whatever you want to say i you know it's funny I, i've always wanted to play doubles with him and we actually were planning to do it in some open tournaments at some point so hopefully he'll uh, grant my request so he's definitely on the list for sure you can bring him to pca open Oh man, he would love that. He would love that. He's uh, actually gonna be a a groomsman in my wedding next year. So maybe, I mean, we can arrange for something like that. You never know. Guy's an amazing player. So, what's um what's your advice, Ruben, to uh, upcoming Davis Cup players? My advice, um, I would say. The biggest thing that I've kind of learned throughout the years is all you can really do is try to become the best tennis player you could possibly be. The best player, the best person you can possibly be. You know, there's a lot of distractions, rankings, ranking points, all these kinds of things you kind of get blinded by. And honestly, it kind of takes you off the path. But really what matters is becoming a better player. And I feel like that should be the number one focus. Don't compare yourself to anyone else be the best that you can possibly be and that'll be good enough for sure and honestly I wish uh, if I could go back in time and tell my younger self that that's what I would tell them stay focused work on your game be the best that you can be and that's all you can really do you know that's what I would say Ruben growing up in in the United States um, did you uh, Early in your career, do you already picture yourself playing for the Philippines or when, when did that happen? Honestly, I, I met Cecil in uh, my sophomore or freshman year in college and he had already switched to the Philippines. I always thought about it because I always thought it would be awesome to play Davis Cup, you know. Um, I met Cecil in college because he came to play. There was a challenger at my school and he was playing and he was talking. He was like, man, you should really do it. It's been awesome. The support is great. And I was like, man, that would be really cool. And so obviously I, I, I was like, that's something that I'll definitely consider once I graduate college. And then I graduated college and then Trett started playing Davis Cup and he was telling me how much fun he was having. And I was like, that kind of sealed it. I was like, I'm going to do that for sure. So I knew I had met you before. And that's when obviously we, we started our relationship and we started the process. And, you know, it's honestly the best thing I've ever done I've, the, the best decision I ever made in my career, for sure. It's given me so many amazing memories, and um, I plan on playing for a while. So hopefully there'll be more memories, for sure. That's um, that's really good to know. And um, I know that you're one of the uh, sports ambassador of uh, Cebuana de Luillier. And uh, can I see your shirt? I saw your shirt earlier. You got to represent, you know? Cebuana de Luillier Sports Tennis Elite. For sure. So, for sure. I mean, how, do you have how, one of those? How, do you have a shirt like this? I have one of those, but um, <laughs> it's, it's not as uh, nice 
nice fit that's uh, as your shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um but um when when did the support of Cebuana Luillier start with you? That started in I think the end of 2011. Um it's kind of a crazy story, you know. I was playing futures a little bit and struggling um and then I started to coach tennis uh, locally so that I could support myself playing tennis because I still wanted to pursue my, my dream of being a professional tennis player. So I was coaching tennis at the time to, mm -hmm. to make money so that I could travel. And um, I actually started doing pretty well doing it that way. And then luckily at the end of the year, um, I was able to speak to Sir John Henry Lulier. Thanks for all the support, obviously. Uh, and he started supporting me financially and, sponsoring me and um it's been yeah since then i mean then i started doing better and better and um yeah i mean I, I can't thank him enough for everything he's done for me do you think um you would have been this successful in your um professional career without the no chance without playing for the philippines without the support of uh Cebuana? no chance no chance i mean that's the biggest i mean one of the biggest reasons i've been able to get to where i am um with the support of the Philippines and, uh, and uh, Sir John Henry. Uh, he's done so much for us, not just me, the rest of the players. And uh, I mean, I can't thank him enough for sure. And it's been a long time support already, right? Like several years. Seven or eight, seven, eight or eight years, maybe eight years. Yeah. It's, it's been an amazing, he's done an amazing job with tennis in the Philippines and, um, uh, Hopefully, I can continue to do my part um, while I'm still playing. And then when I'm done playing, supporting tennis in the Philippines, for sure. And uh, how about your what, – what, what racket do you use now? I am using – I've used a bunch of different rackets throughout the year. But right now, I'm using the head speed. Can you see that? Yes. Head speed. Yes, that's what I'm – that's what I'm using. That's the flavor – of the week right now so that's what i'm using head what are you speed. using i'm using a, a bubble at uh you're back huh yeah i'm back with my bubble at what what racket is it uh blue babble huh blue babble or yellow blue blue babble uh awesome and um that's a good stick yeah but going back to is that your new sponsor now Head. Yes. Um, what's crazy is right before I left, uh, I actually bought these rackets. And then right before I left, I had been talking to the people of in the head Philippines, but <laughs> I wasn't able to visit them before I left because uh, I was a little scared of there being a travel ban being mm -hmm. placed. So I had to, to leave the Philippines. I mean, when, as soon as I could. So um, I wasn't able to meet with the people there, but I'm, I'm supposed to meet with them whenever I, I get back. So obviously thanks to them for the support coming up. Um, I used the uh, head in the past and I was sponsored by Head Philippines. So it's cool to be back for sure. Mm -hmm. Again, dynamic sports with uh, Lai Setang. Yes, thank you. I, I'm, 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 I'm excited to be back on the team for sure. How about your um, apparels? Do you have a sponsor for your apparels, your shoes? The best shoes ever. Asics. Wow. Right here. That's beautiful shoes. You like that? I love that. Oh, so I have good, huh? that, bro. Asics, Philippines, baby. It's so nice. What model is you that? You like it? No, I love it. Uh, it's the uh, Gel Resolution 8. That's really new, huh? What size do you wear? 12. We might have to get you a pair, you know? All right. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for that. For sure. I might have to get you a pair. You like this color? It's pretty cool, huh? That's, it's, like, it's like the Philippines color. I know. I know. I wish they, they had this color during SEA Games. I think that would have been really cool. But this is the color for this year. So that, that's that really was... cool. So is that a hardcore shoes or... What yeah, yeah, these, one, these ones are hardcore, and then I actually have the same version, different color, but clay. Still some, these are from, this is from PCA right here. These, mm. uh, <laughs> there's still some shell left in the, in the tread, 
you know? So what is the difference? Can you tell us about it a little bit between the hard uh, shoes and the clay court shoes? Well, the biggest difference is like the tread. You see how the tread mm -hmm. goes all the way down the shoe. And yeah. it's obviously there's more because you need the grip for clay, yeah. which is obviously hard. It's just a little bit flatter, you know? But uh, yeah, you got you have to have clay court shoes when you're playing on clay for sure because all the sliding and being able to control your movement, that's really important for sure. But um, I think in the Philippines, the kind of clay court that we have, like the shell court, uh, you, I mean, it's okay to use the even the hard court shoes because for sure the slide it's in grainier. The court is 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 it's a shorter slide, so you can use those hard, hard court shoes for sure. But if it's you play grainier, like, it's a, like more, yeah, go, go, ahead, go ahead, ahead. Yeah, it, it shell is so much like thicker. You know what I mean? It has more like so you you actually have tread. You're not just sliding uh, around like when you play like in Europe on clay and it's dry where you can't really control it sometimes so yeah you're for sure right that on on shell i don't think it's necessary to have clay court shoes but if you, you're playing on the clay courts of cebu then you need that um that grip because oh yeah of cebu is uh, really slippery and, yes for um, sure the kind of shoes that you want to use the, those clay court shoes for sure especially when it the sun's out and it's dry I mean, you're going to be sliding everywhere. It's it's crazy. I mean, just like most places that are sunny, you can try to uh, wet the courts and water the courts as much as you as you want, but then the sun comes out and it's dry like instantly. So, um, yeah, you definitely need the clay court shoes there. Um, again, um, our our podcast here is getting a bit long, and I'm I know it's already um. Till midnight out there. <laughs> All good. I'm a night owl, so this is where I <laughs> when I when I live. So <laughs> I, I tell my podcast guests that um, uh, at least we get to do this podcast. It's like a free psychiatrist while while undergoing this uh, Corona crisis. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm happy to have a friend here to talk to. You know, <laughs> man, that two weeks alone in the apartment was tough. I wish we could have done it then. You know. <laughs> um any message to uh to your fans uh i would just like to say thanks i mean you guys the fans are are what make the sport what it is you know uh without you there wasn't it wouldn't be the sport wouldn't be what it is and honestly you guys inspire me so much to keep working hard to keep pushing for my goals and um yeah, you're, you're the things that I remember the most, you know, and just want to say thank you so much for always uh, getting behind me. And I always see the messages on Instagram, Facebook, everything. I always see those things and I try to respond as, as, as fast and as much as I can. Uh, but I hope, you know, I appreciate it uh, from the bottom of my heart that I really, I really, those things mean a lot to me. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, thank you also for that. Uh, we are very thankful that uh, you are playing for the Philippines, always giving us uh, a lot of inspiration, a lot of pride, you playing around the world, uh, wearing the Philippine flag. And um, how about message to uh, your sponsors before we end this podcast, Ruben? So first, I just want to say thanks to John Henry. Uh, obviously, he's meant so much to my career. I wouldn't be uh, where I am without him. So First and foremost, I want to thank him and everyone at Cebuana Lulier for all the amazing support throughout the years. Uh, and then to A6 Philippines, thank you so much for all your support these last few years. Best, best gear in the game, for sure. Um, thank you so much. And then Head Philippines, not officially yet, but soon. Thank you so much. Uh, great to be back on the team. But I just want to say, Thanks to everyone and coaches, you, everyone involved, you know, thanks for, for giving, making the, the job of the players a lot easier and um, just giving us a platform in, in order uh, for us to chase our dreams. You know what I mean? Um, this sport means everything to us and we wouldn't be able to do uh, what we do without you guys. So thank you. And um, maybe also message to um, your parents, your family, before yes. we end the podcast. For sure. Um, especially to my mom and dad. Uh, thanks so much for uh, 
always supporting my dreams. You know, I could, I could have been a pain in the ass sometimes with how strict I am with my training, but I hope, you know, it's all in good, good nature. And it's just cause I want it so bad. Um, but thanks for everything you've ever done through my life. I mean, you've been my biggest support and uh, I love you guys. And thanks to my fiance. I miss you a lot. <laughs> um, hopefully I'll get to see you soon when this is over, but she's a, my, my biggest supporter as well. And I'd like to thank her for everything she does for me. And sorry again for being a pain in the ass <laughs> with my tennis. But um, <laughs> yeah, she knows that I have a lot of big goals in tennis and I, I want to continue to pursue them. Uh, but thanks to her and all of my family for everything that they do for me, for sure. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Thanks, Randy. Yeah. Again, um, thank you for being our episode three guest here at All About Tennis. Uh, I hope everyone who is watching or listening, uh, you know, helps a little bit, especially the tennis community in the Philippines, uh, get some entertainment with this podcast. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And um, don't hang up yet. I'll still yeah. talk to you after this. <laughs> Sounds good. Hopefully I'll be back. Hopefully I'll be back. Oh, for sure. For sure. Thank Thanks, you so Randy. much, everyone. We're, we'll sign off now. Thank you.